it's Allison, and welcome to Thinking Outside the Box. Today, I'm very excited to introduce you to some extremely intense color shifting pigments. These pigments are absolutely awesome. They shift from about two to three colors. And if I can get this one to do it, you can actually see gold. So it's like from a magenta to a purple to a blue to a gold. And if you look closely at this one, you can see the green turning to a, to a turquoise on his fins and his body from a magenta to a blue. These colors are friggin' awesome. <laughs> and I love that some of them are sparkly and some of them are just shiny. I'm also going to show you how I created these with molds. I know I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks. Um, in the beginning, I very much struggled with molds, getting a perfect uh, mold every time. So I'm gonna show you how I do molds, and hopefully if you're struggling, it will help you. So I'm gonna go ahead and get set up with supplies needed, and I will be back. Supplies needed for this project are the color shifting goodness, and I'll go over those each separately after I show you the rest of the supplies. I used a mold from Studio Cat Clayworks. I purchased this mold back in 2016, and it's still absolutely amazing. This is the Scarab mold, and I purchased that from PMC Connections. Actually, it's PMC Connection. This mold here is a mold from Christy Friesen, and you can get that at tinypandora.com. You're gonna need some fine brushes because this is gonna be very detailed work. Some scrap clay, and we're just gonna condition that. You're gonna want a blade, and you're going to want to um, protect your surface treatment. These powders are going to adhere really well to the clay, especially once you cure it in the oven. However, over time and the oils from fingers and whatnot can rub the, um, some of the, the pigment off. So I like to protect it. And if you want super, super shine, you can use the Pandora Deep Shine from Tiny Pandora. And you can also use Verathane. And I buy the Verathane in quartz, and then I transfer them to these ball jars. And as you can see, um, I got four of these out of one quart. And this is back from 2017. I just opened this jar because I've already gone through my first one and it's still as good as new. So you just want to stir that slowly with like the end of a paintbrush or a popsicle stick because you want to try not to get bubbles in it. But that's how I finish my pieces off. So I'm going to go ahead and move this stuff out of the way and we are going to go over the individual color shifts. I'll try and make it quick. If you don't want to see that portion, you can just fast forward through it. I'll be back. All right. These are called Intense Color Pigments. I purchased these from Pearl Pleasures on Etsy. And as always, I will have links to everything in the description below this video, so make sure you check that. But I wanted to give you the numbers for each one so that if you see a color that you like, you'll know which one to get. So this is called IC1. And this is its beautiful color shifting. This is IC2. 
and it goes from a beautiful blue to a gorgeous violet. This is IC3, which is like a bronze, which goes to a gold. This is IC4, which is a pink, which goes to a gold. This is IC5, which is a teal that goes to a purple. This is IC6, which is a green, a teal green that goes to purple. This is IC7, which is a pink that goes to a gold green. And I used these examples um, and put them on these jars. You're actually not going to get the jars. I'll go over that in a second. They come in little baggies, but I like to transfer them over to the jars and then put a swatch on top so I know what each one does. And last but not least, this is IC9. And this one's super sparkly. You're looking at like a magenta to a, to a blue to a purple. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And you will get them in bags. Let me find them. They were actually right in front of me the whole time. But these are how they will arrive to you. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and nine. There is an eight. Um, it's a white powder. It's also an intense, but it doesn't come with um, this set because it's a white powder. Uh, I haven't tried it yet. There's a eight and a 10 and I have not tried those yet so I'm itching to do that but these are what I have and they are awesome if you're interested in these little jars I got them off of Amazon um, they're actually really cool they're little diamond shaped jars and without tipping that one I'll show you one that doesn't have anything in it They were very inexpensive, and I thought just really cute little jars with the little diamonds on the side. And they're perfect to categorize all your powders and put little swatches on top. So I'm gonna go ahead and condition my clay and we'll be back to get this started. One thing I wanted to mention that I forgot is this is water-based Varathane. Um, you can find it at Home Depot. I actually, my Home Depot um, doesn't carry it for some reason. So I purchased it online. And like I said, I got, it was like a special. You get like uh, two pints or one quart. I can't remember what it was. But anyway, you want the water-based. And I put one very thin coat on. Um, the same goes for the Tiny Pandora Deep Shine Resin. I put one very thin coat on. I also forgot to mention that these molds are bakeable in the oven up to 400 degrees. Um, you can put resin, liquid polymer clay. You can bake your pieces. I don't like to do that because I like to make sure that I get a um, perfect impression. Otherwise, you're just wasting your clay but you can bake your polymer clay in them. Uh, you can also use metal clay in them, other types of mediums, um, like in the scrapbooking world, I can't think of them offhand. Um, this one is also bakeable. These are silicone molds, all of them. All right, the key to getting a good impression is to have very well conditioned clay. You want it very soft, and very malleable. So you'll get a good impression. These particular molds, 
I don't use any kind of a release agent, but you can spray water. You can, I don't suggest the cornstarch for this because we are gonna be using the powders. And if there's already a powder onto your clay, these are not gonna stick. So I would stay away from the cornstarch. If you use water, make sure that your, your uh, piece is fully dry before you add your powders because that'll mess that process up. There's also something that you can get from RJ Crafts. It's the Easy No Stick Slip. Um, it's kind of uh, oily. You want to use very, very little. And what I like to do is just spray a little bit onto a paper towel and just kind of dab the molds. But like I said, for these, since they are so flexible, it's really easy to get your uh, piece out. For this one, it's a little harder and that's why I've included it into this uh, video and I'll show you how I get that piece out. All right, so let's go ahead and zoom in and I'm gonna pick the most difficult or what I think is the most difficult shape from each mold and show you how I do it. And I would say that that starfish is going to be the most difficult shape in this one. So the first thing you want to do is take off a bit of clay and you just kind of eyeball what you're going to need. If we need more, we can always add it. This is fully conditioned. I ran it through about 30 times on my pasta machine. You want to get it nice and warm and soft. That is the key. And then I'm gonna go ahead and condition it even more with my fingers. And after you've done the molds for, you know, for a while, you'll be able to judge exactly how much polymer clay you're gonna need for you know, each shape. And you can always add more, take away, doesn't matter. So you're gonna go ahead and condition that with your fingers really good. And then what I do is roll it. And the warmth of my hands, especially when I'm having a hot flash, really helps to get this, the clay soft. You want to make sure your clay is a nice soft ball with no cracks. Now, this shape is kind of challenging, but not really, because what we're going to do is we're going to take this ball and we're just going to pinch five little parts off for our stars or you know for part of the starfish and that's really all you need to do so I'm going to go ahead and place it in my mold and I know that one's going to need more and push these little pieces down in there and that's another nice thing about this mold being so flexible is that all you have to do is just push that clay up into the edges of those areas till you reach the tips of the mold. And you just keep pushing down on it, making sure that you're getting a good impression on the underneath side. And you notice I don't have my clay all the way to the top. That's fine. See, that's no problem. All right, I think this is pretty good. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick the mold up and bend it. And because it's so flexible, that piece just pops right out and you have a perfect impression and all your edges are nice and clean and it is absolutely perfect. So we'll go ahead and put that one there. And for this one, oops, <laughs> except if you smush it, but it's okay. Let's see, I think we'll do a couple out of this one. That one is pretty difficult um, 
and we'll do a fish too. So again, you're going to take, let me put him over there. You're gonna take some of your clay and mush it with your fingers. Get it nice and soft. Now this one I'm gonna do just a little bit differently. We're gonna start with a ball in the middle. And we'll make that a little bit smaller because we'll be adding a little more clay to it. And I'm using, um, this, this scrap clay is actually Sculpey Primo. And it was from a previous tutorial. Now I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna roll out, first we'll roll that into a ball to soften it. And I'm gonna roll these out <clears throat> into little snakes. And I'm gonna place them into each area. So you're just kind of making the shape and putting it in there. All right, now you're just going to push down till all of those pieces are molded together and molded in their spot. I'm gonna put a little bit more clay in the middle. And you just keep pushing until you have no more seams. And you'll never know that they were parts and pieces that you stuck in the mold when you demold it. So you're pushing down to get a good impression and also pushing down to get rid of those seams. Making sure now that there's no clay over the edges. If you do see a little bit, you just push it with your finger back into the mold area. And that way you'll have nice clean edges. Now, this again is a very, very flexible mold. And there you go. You have a perfect mold. All right, I'm gonna do <clears throat> the, this fish here. And then I think you got the idea with the mold. So do it into a ball. So what you're basically doing is you're trying to get kind of the shape of your mold. So this one here, we'll get the fish part. And then I'm kind of going to pinch these to get the tail part. Go ahead and put it in your mold. And now we're going to need our fins. So get a little bit more clay.
and I'm gonna put that there. And we need a little bit more clay for this top fin. All right, now we just start pushing. So that we get all of our seams gone. And getting a good impression on the bottom. I want to make sure that I have no clay going over the edge so I don't have any cleanup when I demold it. So I'm going to pull it back a little from the edge. And I probably could take a little bit of clay out of this one, but I'm not going to. We'll just leave it. If you check your edges, like that went way over. Now I like to take the thickest part of the mold and to pull that out. So you pull your mold back and there you go. A perfect impression. We'll do one more mold and that's the scarab mold. This one's going to be a little different. This one you could spray a little water in and put your clay in or you can put it in the fridge for about five minutes which is probably what we're going to do if it doesn't want to come out by itself. I have nothing in there, so we're gonna try it that way first. If that doesn't work, then we'll go ahead and stick it in the fridge. Getting it nice and warm from my hands, and I'm gonna flatten it just a little bit, kind of getting it in the shape of the scarab. Now put it in the mold and push down. You could, this has kind of a uh, serrated, I guess, edge. I don't really want that on my mold, so I'm not taking it all the way to the top. So I'll pull it back just a little bit push down really good so that you get his wings and everything. And then I like to pull back to that original edge. And smooth my bottom out. All right, I'm gonna try and demold this without putting it in the fridge. If it doesn't work, we'll go ahead and stick it in the fridge. But a lot of times, if you just pull back, you can dump it out and there you go. This one came out shiny because this mold is shiny inside. The others came out matte because they are not shiny inside. So just to let you know why this looks so shiny. All right, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna decorate one of these and just to show you how I do it. And I'm unprepared, I need a tile, I'll be back. All right, I have put my um, scarab onto a ceramic tile 
And now we're gonna go ahead and colorize him. And I think for the scarab, I am going to use a green-blue combo, but more of a turquoise. So I really like this purple-blue. So I think we'll use that and this teal and purple. And then I like to use the gold bronze for his eyes. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and get his eyes done. And I also like to do this area. So I'm just gonna open this up, put a very teeny amount. I have a brush, hair, brush here that is very short and very fine and it's perfect for doing dots in very intricate areas. So I'm just gonna paint that onto his eyes. And these pigments, you only need a very small amount. Very small amount goes a long way. So I've got his eyes done, and now I wanna do this area here. So I'm just gonna put very small amount onto my brush and take it down to the side. A trick with all jars, if you, you struggle getting that lid on, if you screw it backwards first and then forward, it goes right on. All right, now I think we will do this part, the purplish teal and the back wings green. So we'll do that front first. And for that one, I'm gonna use just a little bit bigger brush or longer brush. Dab in just a little. If you get too much on your brush, you just wipe it off on the side and go ahead and dab that on here. Mm, these colors are so gorgeous. You wanna make sure you get your edge so that your whole piece is covered. And that, see, I used a little too much. That's okay, I'll just scoop it off and stick it back in the jar. These um, pigments would be great for like mermaid tails, dragons. They're just like the identical colors that you would see in a dragon. All right, and last but not least, we'll put the back part on. Oh, this blue, mm. these are so yummy. I think I've got all my edges done. Mm. 
and it is that simple. <laughs> that is cool. And it'll look exactly the same when it comes out of the oven. Then all you need to do to protect your piece is to add your Varathane or your Tiny Pandora Deep Shine Brush On UV Resin. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and make some more molds. Go ahead and decorate them, and I will be back when everything is complete and out of the oven. You'll bake this at 275 since it's Sculpey Primo, 275, and I like to bake for one hour. So I'm gonna go ahead, finish these all up, and get these in the oven, and I'll be back when they're done. And here are the finished pieces. Such color shifting goodness. So easy to create. And I hope with my tips and tricks for molds that you're able to create a perfect mold too. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful and I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and leave a nice comment. And until next time, have a wonderful week. Thanks for watching. Bye.